In this video, I'm going to show you how you can automatically sync files from your Synology NAS to the Storage Decentralized Cloud for free. A lot of people in the crypto space provide storage on the storage network. However, they're basically acting as a provider. A lot of people don't realize how easy it is to also use it from a client perspective. And one of the things that storage does that is really awesome is that they provide 150 gigabytes of storage for free. And the way they do this is they essentially every month they give you a dollar and technically it's permanent. They give you a dollar 65 permanent credit on your account that is essentially a dollar 65 monthly, which covers the cost of 150 gigabytes of storage and bandwidth. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a Synology NAS and I'm actually using a Synology DS220 Plus which is currently probably the most common home Synology NAS. If we hop on over to Amazon and we take a look at the DS220s. Here we can see it's around $300 and this is basically a dual drive NAS that you can pretty much run anything you want on. It runs Synology's OS, uh, it runs DSM, and so it's able to leverage all of the Synology applications. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to head over to Storage's website and it's storage, S-T-O-R-J.io. And then in the middle of the screen, if you don't already have an account, you're going to click start for free. And here it's going to ask you for some information. And here you can pick, you know, whether you're in the US, EU, or Asia. And uh, you're just going to fill in some information. Now you're going to get an email. You're going to need to confirm your email. So go ahead and click the link in your email. And that's going to bring you over to basically this dashboard. And they're going to give you two options. Either you can start with a web browser. And this would be similar to like if you were using Google Drive, OneDrive, and you were just going to like drive.google.com and manually uploading files, you can use their web interface for that. Or we can also use the CLI, which would be similar to like a map network drive or something that you could use with like Amazon S3 buckets, those types of things. But for us, we're actually going to do neither of those. We're just going to click skip and go directly to the dashboard and here we can see this is logged us in and you can uh, dismiss this pop-up or you can go to the billing section if you want to see billing i do recommend going to the billing section just to familiarize yourself one of the really cool things about storage is that they're really targeting the end user and so one of the things that they're doing here you can see i have my storage token balance but if I go to edit payment method, right here, I can add storage tokens on the blockchain. And if I do that, then I receive a 10% bonus by using their native coin. However, I can do add payment method and I can also pay by credit card. And this is what a lot of blockchains need to start to do, right? These decentralized service offerings are gonna need this credit card on ramp for basically selling their services to the end user, right? Short of me knowing that storage is, you know, a decentralized coin, it's an ERC-20 token. If I didn't know that, they're not even really throwing that in my face, right? I'm basically able to just go add payment method. I'm going to say add new payment method because I don't know what that is. And immediately I'm like, oh, okay, credit card. This is what I would really like to see from services like Flux, and other chains that are trying to sell a service to the end client. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up where it says my first project. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna get manage projects. And here you can see that on the free plan, you can only have this one project, but if you upgrade to a pro account, then you can have multiple projects. We're just gonna go click here. I'm gonna click edit and I'm gonna change the name of it. And in here, I'm just going to say um, 
let's just say my home NAS, right? Hit save. Perfect. Now we need to create a bucket. One of the things storage does is it basically took the Amazon S3 bucket structure and tried to not necessarily replicate it, but they tried to build their system kind of on top of that architecture so that it was easily adaptable to existing organizations. You have a lot of companies that are using these S3 buckets with Amazon. You want an easy swap in, swap out, where you're really just swapping out a connection string, and it makes it easy to migrate. So for us, what we need to do is we need to create a new bucket. And this is essentially just a container. And you can almost think of this as kind of a root folder of sorts. So we're gonna say new bucket, and in here, I'm just gonna say uh, NAS data. We're gonna say create. And here we can see we now have our bucket. Now if we click on the name of the bucket, here we can see that it wants us to enter a encryption passphrase. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my encryption passphrase. And now you can see this brings us kind of into a web dashboard. If we wanna upload a file, we could easily say upload and upload that file. Now one of the things we need to do to make this work on our NAS is we need to create S3 credential account. So to do that, we're gonna head on over to access and then we're gonna say create S3 credentials. And then in here, I'm just gonna call this NAS backup for the name. Permissions, we want all. If you just want it to be a kind of like a one-way sync you and never delete in the uh, within storage, you could remove delete. But for me, I just want it to sync. And now I'm gonna select just the single bucket so that if I do upgrade to a pro account, it's not trying to grant access to those other buckets. And you can also specify a duration if you want. And this is essentially an expiration on that account. And it's gonna tell us that we are opting into server-side encryption. Just go ahead and say continue here. And here you have two options. Either you can generate a seed phrase or you can input your own passphrase. And this needs to be a seed. For me, I'm just gonna tell it to generate one for me. And again, if you want it to regenerate, you just click off, click on it again, it'll regenerate. I'm just gonna go ahead and generate one off screen. And they do give you the option to copy to a clipboard and download it to a text file. You're gonna click download, then you're gonna check this box that says that uh, you understand that basically you can't ever recover it, so that downloaded file is your only copy. Then you're gonna go ahead and say create my access, and here it's gonna give you a couple keys. Definitely wanna download this, you're gonna need this. We can go ahead and close it, and now we can see that we have this NAS backup access. If we ever wanna revoke it in the future, we can just say delete access. Now we're gonna hop on over to my Synology device. One of the things I'm gonna do real quick is I'm going to create a folder. So I have this data. I've got this files folder. And within this, I'm actually going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this um, storage sync, meaning anything that lives in this folder will get auto synced to storage. Now we're going to click on applications. And we want to search for Hyper Backup. So Hyper Backup is the app that we're looking for. And once this comes up, we have all these options for syncing. And what we want is we want S3 storage, which is gonna be under cloud service. So just scroll down until you see S3 storage. Go ahead and click that. And for the server, we want a custom server URL. Now for the server address, that last file that downloaded has our credential information in it. So we wanna go ahead and pull that up. And I'm gonna pull that up off screen. However, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have your access key, your secret key, and your endpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the endpoint which is gonna be this gateway.storageshare.io. Our signature version is gonna be v4. Our request style is gonna be path style. 
and then we need to put in our access key, our secret key, before we fill out anything else. Okay, so now that we have those in, when we click this drop down, if everything worked properly, it should show us our bucket list. And there we can see mass data. This was the bucket that we created on that storage web dashboard. So go ahead and select that. And this directory, this is basically going to be a subfolder that it creates within this mass data bucket that our files are going to be stored in. So I'm just going to call this backup. Uh, we'll call this mass backup. Now we're going to say next. And here it's going to ask us what data we want to back up. So for me, I'm going to select that new folder that I created called storage sync. That's the only thing I want to back up. Another nice thing about using Synology is you have the ability to actually back up applications as well. I'm not going to do this, but that is something else you can leverage. And here we're going to create this job. So I'm going to hold this storage sync called storage backup sync. And then for notifications, uh, you can either leave this on or off. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on. That's fine. Make sure you're compressing. This will save storage and you want encryption. Now the upload part size needs to be 64 megabytes, not 512 megabytes. So go ahead and change that to 64. And the schedule can pretty much be, you know, whatever you want it to be. Uh, for me, I'm just going to run daily at, you just do 8 p.m. Now the other thing you can do is you can run integrity checks. This will actually confirm that the data is good, that is backed up. I'm going to turn this off. This will consume extra bandwidth. It's basically going to connect to your bucket and do a data compare. So if you're running free plan, I recommend turning this off, especially if you're going to have significant files that you're syncing. And we're going to leave client side encryption off since we are encrypting at the bucket level already. Now we're going to say next. Now this part is completely optional, uh, but this will do rotational backups for you. And so I like to use smart recycle. If you kind of hover over here, here you tell, it basically says that it's going to keep our daily versions up to a month. Let's go ahead and say done. And be patient. This will take a few seconds to run through this. It's actually creating a scheduled task. And that's going to give us a pop that says, it's going to ask us if we want to back up now. Before we hit yes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just put a file in here. Let's just go ahead and copy my logo. Go ahead and put that in here. All right, so now we have a file in here, and before we hit save, if we come over to our dashboard, let's just take a look at this bucket, and right now there's no files. So now we're going to say yes. The backup's been completed, and we can see here, so the last successful backup was at 1026 p.m. today, and the next scheduled one is 8 p.m. tomorrow. And if we take a look, we can see the size was 518k. And it gives us just kind of those details of what that backup is. Now, one thing I do want to mention, this is a true backup and isn't just a copy of the file, right? Meaning when we take a look at this on the storage network, we're not going to see raw copies of our files. We're actually going to see everything segmented into the backup data structure. And what that allows you to do is at any time, uh, if you made a change to the file and you want to revert to the previous day's version, you can come in here, go to restore data, and you're going to see a list of all your backups. And you're going to be able to click on that thing and actually restore from it. So now let's hop on over. We're going to go back to buckets. And if we look inside NAS data now, we can see we now have 17 objects in here. And this is our backup. And if we take a look at this folder, here you can see this is the, the data structure from Synology Hyper Backup. Now, one of the things that's really cool about the storage web dashboard, it allows you to see kind of all over the world where your data 
is being stored. So as an example, if I click on this info.db file, here we can see this is everywhere where my fi this specific file is being stored. So these are nodes all over the world. All the blue dots is where there's essentially a copy of my file. So at any time, you know, 90% of these go down, I still have access to my file. Here we can see it's 80 places. Uh, if we go into like the config folder, share data, and we take a look at like this complete list file, same thing. There's 80 copies of this file. And if you notice, this file is on different servers than the other file I showed you. Some of these could be possibly be the same server, but you're going to notice that each file is kind of separated out, meaning if all 80 of these nodes went down, I'd still be able to access some of the other files, just not every single file. Uh, the likelihood of that happening is very rare, and I believe as nodes would go offline, if, if that happens, you know, they'll be disqualified from the network, uh, but also that my data will be replicated to more nodes. And another cool thing from the web dashboard is if I click on any of these files, I can actually download it right here. It's going to download it to the computer that I'm on, which is really cool. I also have the option to share this thing. And it'll actually give me a, a link that I can send to people. I'm actually going to open the incognito window. That way I'm not logged into that session. If I paste that, here you can see that it actually shows me all the nodes, right? It started on 80 across the world. And it gives me access to download it right from here. So I'm unauthenticated. In the event I wanted to upload a file and share it with, you know, basically anybody that had that link, I could do that. The other thing we can do while we're in here is if I just wanted to upload a regular file manually, we can do that. So let me just grab, let's grab this file. And here we can see it is immediately uploaded, has not been distributed to the node yet. Uh, that distribution can take quite some time. So if you don't see any blue dots, don't be alarmed. Um, Typically, if you're uploading from the API or you're uploading through like the backup solution I showed you, you're going to see those blue dots as soon as that file's there. However, if you manually upload from the web dashboard, it may take some time before you see blue dots there. But the file is still accessible to you. Um, I can, you know, leave that bucket. I can come back into the bucket and I can download that file if I want and I can open it up. I can also come in and delete it or share it or just view the details of it, right? Just kind of that pop up. So we'll go ahead and just delete that. I'm going to go ahead and leave my archive on and we are good. So now what's happening is every day it's going to take a backup snapshot of that folder I created and sync it to storage as long as I remain under the 150 gigabyte storage limit for the free plan I won't be charged anything I didn't have to set up a credit card didn't have to do any type of billing or anything if you take a look down here in my account you can see it's labeled as free and so I'll never be charged uh, once I run out of space then we'll either have to upgrade or the data will stop syncing